48 minutes. Tom, can you talk about that, that fact you just brought up? It seemed like this was your most complete game. Yeah. No, it, 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 and again, they're, they're a great team. And they're, you know, they're down some guys too. So uh, I think getting a lead early was important for us. Uh, I thought the rebounding was, was a huge factor. Uh, and we made shots. I, I thought offensively the ball was, was hopping, particularly in the, in the first half. Um, and when we make quick decisions and move the ball, we're going to get good shots. It seemed like Joaquin played with uh, not only good statistically, but with passion and emotion. Did you see that as well? You, you know, like you can see, he's, he's getting his rhythm. Right. You know, and uh, he got, and, and, you know, I think the, the biggest problem that, he, that he's had this year was missing training camp. You know, so basically, this would be like the, if he had gone through camp a month, you know, so you could see his timings coming back. And he's getting a lot more comfortable with the ball. Uh, you know, his, his defense has been there. So, uh, but his reaction, his timing, all that stuff is is is, is pretty good right now. How his, his his emotion? I mean, obviously, he's made his feelings about Miami in the past well known and stuff. But it seems like seeing seeing the heat out there kind of sparks some emotion that's kind of been missing from him. I you know. You didn't see I, him uh, play more emotionally tonight. You know, to me, it's a, it's. I I don't know. I guess he played. He's been playing with energy. He played. I thought he played just as well in, in our last game. Uh, you know, and, and so, you know, if we're, we're, you can't rely on emotion to get things done. I mean, it's part of it, but I think being ready mentally, being ready physically, and being ready emotionally, you need all three qualities. Uh, to try to put it on well, his emotions, I, I don't buy into that. What were you most, most pleased with tonight? The win. <laughs> you, uh, what specifically about the win? No, it, you know, like for us, it, it, here's the thing. I, you know, I, I think we've been playing hard, and I think uh, we've been disappointed that we haven't been able to close games out. You know, like we've, we've had a lot of one possession games. And, and as I told our players today, I said, you know, right now, uh, I think you're pl we're, we're moving in the right direction. We don't have anything to show for it, but I, I see it coming. And, uh, and now the challenge for us is to come in tomorrow with the mindset of uh, make the necessary corrections to prepare ourselves to play against Detroit. To, you know, like to not feel good about ourselves, to understand why you either win or lose, uh, move forward in the proper manner, uh, and keep building. And I think that's important. I think we have to establish the right habits to understand, you know, how you win. And uh, for us, we can never lose sight of the fact that we are shorthanded and we're going to have to play incredibly hard um, to be uh, to achieve the success that we're hoping to achieve. How specifically do you think the absence of Dwayne Wade affected Miami's rotations? Well, he's a great player, you know. That, but the the, the thing about their team is, uh, you know, that when you can bring a guy like Ray Allen in to fill in for him, uh, you're talking about a Hall of Fame player. Ray Allen's a great player. That team is a great, great team. They're very well coached. Um, they play together. They're strong on both ends. They miss some shots that they normally make. But you know, you're talking weight is, you know, that you, when you look at the the shooting percentages of all their players, um, you know, they all they make the game easy for, for each other. You know, uh, LeBron is unique with his skill set, but you you sometimes you, you can't overlook Wade and how great he is. Uh, you know, so uh, you know that's why that team is so good, and I think they you know you can see their commitment. They all sacrifice a lot for each other. Uh, but they always play. They play hard. They play smart. They're tough. You know, you have to play for 48. They don't beat themselves. You got to beat them. Uh, Tom, you've, you've got a number of games where you started slowly, and then especially in the third quarter, and that sort of got you sort of jumped on the whole time. What did you see coming out and coming out of halftime? It's kind of different. Well, we've run the gamut this year. You know, we've started fast. We started slowly. We ended quarters poorly. We haven't played tough with a lead. But we'll concentrate on our improvement and uh, you know try to build the right habits. Uh, you know, one win doesn't solve you know 
all our issues, we got to keep building. Uh, you know, I think the, the big plus right now is I think uh, we're starting to get a, a rotation where guys are comfortable with each other. Um, you know, and as I said earlier, uh, we started the season, I thought our bench was playing at a very, very high level. And now the bench is, you know, sort of changed around. Um, Kirk going to the starting unit, uh, Tony going to the starting unit. Uh, has changed the, the, you know, our bench play. But I think uh, Mike Dunleavy has gotten comfortable again uh, with that role. And Taj has been, Taj and Mike have played great all year off the bench. And Nazi has done a really solid job. They, you know, you can't overlook that. Um, so, and I thought Marcus was very good, very good. You know, I thought he was aggressive, um, you know, did a very good job for us.